All right, with this uh, forecast video update on this uh, Saturday, March the 9th. Uh, this is actually, the, we'll call it the special edition. I'm Josh Brown. And, and once again, I don't do Facebook Live uh, videos for weather on the weekends, but uh, since there's some active weather going on across Middle Tennessee, I, sometimes, like on some weekends, I will have to go on the air when there's, uh, <clears throat> like, like I said, if there's any bad weather. So, uh, But uh, if we look at the radar right now, as you can see, yes, there are still some severe storms going on across Middle Tennessee at the moment. Of course, let me go ahead and turn on the uh, share screen mode so you all can see the radar. So, and just, a, and just a little while ago, we actually had a tornado warning over in Rutherford, Cannon, and parts of Wilson counties, but at least the warning is now over because the storm has actually moved out. So all we have right now, of course, the plateau right now, or basically, yeah, yeah just the plateau, is just this uh, severe thunderstorm warning that is in effect uh, right now for, um, <clears throat> that's not in effect here, for southern portions of Smith County, uh, parts, parts of uh, DeKalb, Putnam, in southern uh, Jackson counties, and again, this is for the storm that could produce winds uh, estimated around 60 miles an hour. Let's, let's turn, turn on the wind shear here and see how strong the winds are with this uh, thunderstorm. And as of right now, it shows the winds are not really as violent. It shows, if we can pinpoint some of the winds right now, it shows uh, some winds here near I-40 just to the west of uh, Cookville, just around 31 miles an hour. And even and also 41 mile per hour winds over near uh, just to the west of Smithville. So that's what we got right now here on on the radar with this uh, squall line. So at least the good news is for now, we do not we do not have any tornado warnings in effect here for our viewing area, but if there's another tornado warning out for a potential for maybe a little bit of a weak rotation with the squall line, I'll definitely let you know and come back on the air uh, as soon as I can. So again, this storm is pretty much moving due to the east very quickly right now. If we turn on the information from the National Weather Service and see where it's, how far, or I say how fast or slow it's, that storm is going. Let's see. By the way, the warning goes into effect until 8 o'clock. So, yeah, this is moving due to the uh, east at 65. So, it's, it's moving pretty fast. So, so again, a severe thunderstorm warning for southern portions of Smith County, <clears throat> northern DeKalb, southeastern Jackson, southeastern Wilson, northern White, uh, western Putnam, and northern Cannon County. So, again, you folks are under that warning until 8 o'clock. So, that should, should be in effect here for about the next uh, 28 minutes or so as the storm continues to move due east northeast at around 65 miles per hour. So I'm gonna put I'm gonna put a track on this storm for you and show you who's next in line to be impacted by this potential uh, severe storm. So as always just give me just a second to get this to put this track. So it's, it's for the storm right here. So it gets moving due east northeast at 60 miles per 65 miles per hour. Okay, let's see it's 732. Fix the time. Let's go to the all communities here. So this should be impacting places like uh, Lafayette, not the Lafayette in Macon County, but the a little small community of Lafayette somewhere, maybe around uh, Putnam County or Smith County at around 737, uh, Cedar Hill at 739, Ensor at 740, Baxter at 741, uh, Bloomington subdivision, I guess what it is. I can't pronounce, I actually can, cannot say the uh, S word, but around 742 for that area and then Westgate at 743. And then the same thing for Double Springs and Union Hill. And also uh, Snow Mayberry at 744 and Long Meadows at 744 as well. So if you're in these smaller communities here, basically over in western Putnam County, just be prepared that this storm is taking to your direction. And, and I think you may want to get indoors immediately because, you know, there's a lot of lightning with with this squall line and also there's some heavy winds. So it's be safer just to go ahead and get inside immediately and, wait, and just wait until this thing passes on by. So again, this is just a severe thunderstorm warning in effect here for, again, for Putnam County into uh, part, parts of... Uh, uh, DeKalb County, and of course for parts of southern Jackson County, says the storm moves to the uh, east-northeast. And of course, Cookville, you're next to the line here to be impacted by, impacted by this potential uh, severe storm as well. So just uh, give you a heads up on that. We also have another severe thunderstorm warning in effect right now. And before I get right to that, there's a, actually another, another a strong thunderstorm here over towards uh, northern Smith County into uh, Clay County right now, and even up towards uh, Kentucky. But as of right now, this does not appear just it does not appear to be severe at the moment. So just keep that in mind here. But we'll submit a little closer here and show you who's seeing the heaviest rain right now. It's basically near uh, Dale Hollow Lake, basically around Salina into we'll say around the Carthage area in Smith County. Just walk along the Highway 53 corridor and 52 as well. We're seeing the little strong thunderstorm. I'll turn on the wind shear. So you can see if we see it, and it, anything a little impressive with the winds here. And so far, don't see like a whole lot of uh, pinks, which is, indicates winds estimated between about 65 to 70 miles per hour away from the radar. 
So for Salina, you have to, you're actually seeing winds right now at around 43 miles an hour. So not, I mean, it's not really as high. It's just producing some gusty winds here. But usually in order to get a severe thunderstorm warning, winds have to be up to about 60 miles per hour or higher or hail up to about quarter size. So but we don't see any 60 mile per hour winds with this, uh, with that storm over here towards Clay and, J and Jackson counties. Uh, I, I think I meant this, I think I said Smith County just a second ago. I meant to say Jackson County. <clears throat> so I apologize for that. Also seeing winds over towards Gainesboro at around 31 miles an hour. And over near Dale Hollow Lake, you're seeing, look at this here, we're talking winds up to 70 miles per hour. These are some pretty strong winds. And yeah, I think there's a funny feeling that, that a severe thunderstorm warning could be issued for parts of Clay, maybe we'll say Overton and Pickett counties here pretty soon. Because uh, again, this storm is uh, producing winds up, up, up to uh, 70 miles per hour near the Dale Hollow Lake area. So we'll have to watch this carefully uh, if, if they issue the warning for, from the weather service. But again, that is a pretty strong, nasty thunderstorm with that squall line that we're watching on radar. Also, we're going to go further south here because there's another warning in effect right now. Uh, let's see. Oh, I think the warning has been expired. Well, I guess just a second ago. Oh, actually, just a little while ago, there was a, another severe thunderstorm warning for counties to the southeast. But I think the – oh, actually, there it is. Oh, never mind. <laughs> couldn't, couldn't, see, couldn't see the polygon box there, I guess. But yeah, this is another severe thunderstorm warning that's in effect right now. This is one for uh, northern sections of Lincoln County and one in effect for Moore County. Let's see what time that should be in effect, which I believe it's until 745 or 8 o'clock. Let's see. Yeah, until 745 here. It should be in effect here for the next uh, 10 minutes or so. So again, this is for Moore and northeastern Lincoln County. So again, again, you folks are under a severe thunderstorm warning until 745. And again, this storm is capable of, capable of producing winds up to 60 miles per hour and the potential for some penny-sized tail. And that's what we do northeast quickly at 60 miles per hour. So at least the good news is for now, there have been no re reports of, uh, like, or, or as you say, I don't see any rotation, like any like any uh, hook echoes, like on with the squall line on radar. So that's good. That's the good news. But you may never know. That could be the possibility here for our counties east of I-65 for the rest of the evening hours. So just be prepared for that. So just uh, <clears throat> we'll let you all know. And uh, speaking of which, you can see those yellow, yellow shaded counties here for ports to Middle Tennessee, basically from Davidson, Sumner, Trousdale, Wilson, Rutherford, Williamson, Murray, Bedford counties, and down towards the Alabama state line. As you can see, that is actually a tornado watch that is in effect here. And by the way, of course, the severe threat for Nashville is done here. So if you're going to be out and about later this evening here across the metro Nashville area, you should be fine. So again, the severe threat is done uh, for Music City. Of course, I guess, I guess we're kind of pretty lucky. We have not seen a whole lot of severe thunderstorm or tornado warnings uh, this afternoon or this evening, especially for uh, Metro Nashville and rest of Middle Tennessee. So I guess the worst has become a little bit, has become strengthening, strengthening a little bit just to the east of I-65. So that's what we got right now. But uh, I have a funny feeling that the watch is going to get canceled here pretty soon. And of course, for now, it's supposed to be in effect until 9 o'clock, but... But since the severe threat is over for, over for Nashville and areas along the I-65 corridor, I think the watch is going to get canceled. So, so again, uh, we'll say from Wilson County points on to the west, again, the severe threat is done. But if you're, if you're in the Cumberland Plateau, you're not out of the woods yet because uh, this squall line will be, will be heading into your direction pretty soon. So let's go over some of the storm reports that we received or we received earlier today. And we actually got a couple of wind damage reports down around Lawrence County. Like one over here down towards uh, Etheridge, we had a report of a power line down across Gwynn Road. Uh, there's been a report of an outbuilding and a barn sustained damage along Etheridge Red Hill Road. And I don't think it wasn't a tornado because there's no tornado warning for Lawrence County. I think it was mostly just straight line wind damage. So, so that's 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 what I'm thinking. Also, another report coming in here just before seven o'clock this evening. Also down uh, near Loretto in Lawrence County, there have been reports of trees dug along Tennessee Highway 98, about five miles north of the state line of Alabama. Also, there have been, uh, been other reports of additional trees down east of Tennessee Highway 227 near the Liberty Grove area. Again, this is in Lawrence County. So a couple of damage reports coming in there. Coming in there, And you can see those little curvy uh, symbols here. That's indicated we'll call it non-thunderstorm wind damage reports, like over here towards uh, um, <clears throat> over here towards Metro Nashville. Basically, in the Bordeaux area, there has been reported of a tree down this afternoon that knocked out power to local residents. Again, these are just from non-thunderstorm winds, so just keep that in mind. Also, another non-thunderstorm wind gust was reported as well. That brought a little bit of some damage here. That's near Tennessee Highway uh, 196 that blocked a tree, or actually the tree that blocked those two roads. Uh, that takes you to Franklin. That's over near the Fairview area. 
Also, earlier this afternoon, we had reports of some small hail up in Sumner County, up in the Portland area. They had reported of a, of a three-quarter of an inch diameter. So that's like penny to dime-sized hail is what I'm guessing. So, I mean, that, that's pretty small hail. So at least the hail threat is not was not high today. So I guess we're – so that's the good thing. Also, other reports coming in here from uh, Todd County, Kentucky. Uh, they, have, they have reported of a wind gust about four miles northeast of Trenton of, of around 50 miles per hour. Again, these are just these are non thunderstorm wind gusts, so just keep that in mind. And also over, over towards uh, Christian County, just about uh, about seven miles north and northwest of Hopkinsville, they report of a wind gust of forty one miles per hour as well. And uh, also over to your towards the Fort Campbell area, uh, they report of a wind gust uh, there around forty five miles per hour. And then over towards uh, Trick County near Katie's, they report of a wind gust of forty miles per hour. Again, these are non thunderstorm wind gusts. So just keep that in mind. So. <clears throat> yeah, that can. And by the way, there's still a, there's still a wind advisory that goes in effect until nine o'clock tonight as well for most of Middle Tennessee. Because again, we still can see some gusty winds. Uh, you know, since the line is moving out over, over towards the plateau. So let's go ahead and take a look at some of the rain totals here. Because we have seen some pretty decent heavy rains across the midstay here with this uh, when we had some of those embedded storms that form ahead of that squall line uh, earlier today. So give me just a second. Turn on the accumulation rainfall. So yeah, so these are some of the rainfall totals here that Middle Tennessee have seen so far today, and as you can see, you see that little, I guess just, yeah, 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 the little uh, light, lighter green shaded color polygon boxes right here, yeah, for Davidson and Williamson counties. That is actually an aerial flood advisory that is in effect right now. We'll look at that here in just a second, but uh, I'm going to pinpoint some of the rain totals here. Look, you can see those yellows here from parts of Macon County into uh, Trousdale. Even into uh, northern Wilson County, so it looks like they picked up nearly up to about uh, 2.1 inches of rain so far. So, uh, so, so it looks like so at least the good news is we have not seen any report, or I don't see any in impressive totals like we've seen a couple weeks ago when we had when we had the heavy rain and the flood threat across uh, Middle Tennessee and southern Kentucky. But so far around Nashville, they they've only picked up nearly up to about 1.13 inches. So nearly over an, an inch was been reported over here around Music City uh, today. Yeah, down towards Franklin, uh, look at this here, over over about one to th over an inch to three quarters uh, of rain was reported over near the Franklin area as well. And also, we'll mostly talk about lighter totals here, west of I-65 in the light green shade of colors. So, again, still a possibility we can see some heavy rain with the squall line for areas along the plateau for the rest of the evening. So just uh, uh, keep that in mind. But we're not expecting like a big flood threat like we've seen a couple of weeks ago. So that's the good news. So all I have to worry about is just the severe threat, you know, the threat for some strong winds and even a potential of an isolated tornado, which, which of course, as, after the system moves out of Middle Tennessee, that should, you know, the squall line should be weakening, which is going to be good news for eastern Tennessee and two parts of Alabama and Georgia. Of course, they have a marginal risk of severe weather for at least for portions of, state, of Alabama and Georgia and parts of the Florida Panhandle region for uh, tomorrow. So at least the, the severe threat with the severe threat should be weakening. So that's the good news to hear. So let me go ahead and turn on the uh, back on the radar. And again, of course, just a second ago, they uh, the Storm Prediction Center has, has actually canceled the tornado watch for Davidson, Sumner, Williamson, Murray, and uh, Lawrence counties. So the only counties uh, that are still under this uh, tornado watch box that's in the counties in yellow will be only for Giles, Marshall, Lincoln, Moore, Bedford, Rutherford, and Wilson counties. Again, you folks, still, you folks still have that uh, tornado watch until uh, nine o'clock. But I think you folks are going to see that watch canceled because the you know the squall line is moving out of well almost about to be moving out of here, out of your areas here because there's uh, still a warning here in effect here again that's the severe thunderstorm warning in orange for parts of uh, Lincoln County and Moore County, and then another one here for parts of uh, Smith, DeKalb, Putnam, and Jackson counties as well. So let's get back on the radar here and show you what we're seeing right now. And uh, by the way, for those of you that are just popping on into the Facebook live stream, I recommend you can go ahead and uh, share the uh, feed with your other followers. That way they know what the weather's going on across Middle Tennessee right now. And of course, we'll look at the models here in a little bit here in a little bit because so, about the weather, know what the forecast is going to look like here for the next uh, 16 days. So again, for those of you that are just popping on into the live stream on Facebook, I really, I really appreciate if you can go ahead and share the feed if you can. So just uh, keep that in mind. So once again, the line here, the squall line, is actually basically just to the east of Nashville. So again, from Wilson County points on to the west, we're done with the severe threat tonight. And we're expecting mostly dry conditions tomorrow, by the way. We're expecting temperatures to be in the upper 50s into the low 60s, so it's a little cooler. So 
So just keep that in mind there. <clears throat> but again, still got a cluster line of showers and thunderstorms here over towards uh, Clay County into uh, Jackson County to uh, Putnam, uh, DeKalb, and all the way down towards, uh, kind of, sort of a little strong thunderstorm here down towards southern Giles County. So it looks like Giles County is still not out of the woods yet uh, with that uh, thunderstorm here because, because it's pretty strong. And of course, let's, let's, take, let's take a look at the flood advisory because I forgot to do that here. So uh, let's take a look at this uh, flood advisory that is in effect here for Davison County and Williamson counties that is in effect right now. So let me turn on the information from the Weather Service. Well, there's too many flood advisories in effect. Oh, actually, they've expired the one that was actually, well, thanks to, well, that was in effect just, you know, right now. But uh, but you see the advisory, you see the Polygon box has, it's gone. So you can see the one, or say the advisory is canceled. So I think, well, I think that's what we're going to say. So I guess this flood advisory that's in effect for Davidson County and the uh, in the light green is for mainly just for rivers. This is because of all the heavy rain that we've seen uh, a couple of weeks ago. So, uh, so that's why. So let's uh, go ahead and take a look at the GFS models for the next uh, 16 days. Uh, and of course, and again, if there's any tornado warnings out for at least for this line, uh, as we end the after we, after we look at the models, well, I'll let you know in you know in order to keep you guys safe. So let's look at the uh, forecast for uh, Monday. So it looks like Monday's weather should be looking pretty good here, except that we're going to be watching this next system that could be potentially moving into Middle Tennessee by Thursday, which we'll look at that here in just a second. But for us, just enjoy the nice and sunny weather, not just for tomorrow, but also again on Monday to start the new work week. And if we look at the uh, temperatures for highs, a little bit cooler, but still looking pretty good. We're talking mostly upper 50s to near 60s, so not a bad day for tomorrow and Monday. But look at those temperatures, though, across much of the south here. Goodness gracious, we're talking about temperatures in the 70s and 80s for Florida to Georgia to southern Alabama to parts of Louisiana all the way down towards Texas. So, yeah, that's going to feel pretty nice and warm here, at least for at least for pretty much almost uh, throughout the new work week. So, but uh, wish we could wish we could see some 70s and 80s here for the mid-state, but we don't see any of that here for Monday. All right, here's the Tuesday of uh, next week. Uh, looks like we'll be still looking pretty dry here for Middle Tennessee, but of course here's this uh, here's this uh, next system we'll be watching carefully. That could produce a chance for some heavy rain for the uh, Central Plains region. But we don't worry about that here for Tuesday, like I said, from Middle Tennessee, because we'll be looking pretty much rain-free. So more sunshine is in the forecast that day. And temperature is still a little bit cooler, but a bit milder. So it's going to feel like somewhat like spring for Middle Tennessee. We're talking still some 50s and maybe some low 60s uh, for that day. Again, that's for uh, Tuesday of next week, or to say coming up here this upcoming Tuesday. But look at the temperatures, though, still looking really, really warm across much of the south with highs in the 70s and 80s. So they're going to feel more like spring as we start the first half of the work week. And, of course, there is even a risk of severe weather here across portions of Texas uh, for the day on Tuesday. As you can see on the instability values, it shows the conditions could be a little, little bit more favorable to produce a threat for a few strong to severe storms ahead of this uh, next system we'll be watching carefully. <clears throat> so just keep that in mind. And as we head into uh, Wednesday, still the weather looks to still still stay pretty dry here for Middle Tennessee. So more sunshine will be in at least for not just for Monday, or not, not, for tomorrow, not just for tomorrow, but also for uh, Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. At least for the next four days, should be looking pretty much rain free with lots of sunshine before uh, system number two does move in as we head into late week. But it looks like the system will stay off towards the west here. That could produce the heavy rain potential across portions of the central uh, plains region. And temperatures for highs looks to be, look at this here, we're talking maybe some much warmer temperatures as we head into uh, Wednesday. We're talking highs only in the 60s, and it's possible that some spots could flirt near 70 degrees. So hopefully maybe you'll enjoy that for Wednesday, because uh, especially before this uh, next system rolls in. <clears throat> All right, as we head into Thursday, this is actually in the morning of next Thursday. This is the 14th. This is when the, this next system will be approaching the mid-state. That could produce a chance for more, maybe some showers and maybe some more storms. And uh, if we look at the high, or actually in the morning glow temps here, I meant to say, we're talking still some 60s. Uh, it could be the morning glow temps here. It could be, really, it could be really, like really a mild Thursday morning if this forecast is correct here. And it's possible, if this, this is the instability here, it shows that it's possible that some, some of these storms could turn strong and potentially severe. But again, just remember, we're about five days away. And, go, and of course, we still got plenty of time to watch this uh, next system uh, carefully. So we'll see what happens. But it looks like a good chance that severe storms will stay down towards the south here from Alabama to Mississippi, Louisiana, and stretching back down towards Corpus Christi and Houston. 
So we'll see what happens. And here's the afternoon of next Thursday. Still, the, the uh, thunderstorm activity continues for Middle Tennessee as the system moves off towards the east. And uh, temperatures looks to be still, look at this here, we're talking much, much warmer weather. We're talking highs in the 60s and even low to mid 70s possible if the forecast is correct here, according to what the GFS shows. Again, this is for Thursday of uh, next week. So that's going to feel pretty nice here, except, you know, with the wet weather that's going to be returning on Thursday. So it looks like Wednesday should be the only good day. You can go outside and uh, just enjoy these spring-like temperatures before we get storms on Thursday. And again, in terms of severe weather on the instability, it shows, yes, this is just going to show a little good chance of severe weather here across, same thing across much of middle Tennessee as we head into the day on Thursday. So that could, be, that's, that could form into a possible squall line. We'll call it maybe another squall line even as we head into uh, that day. But again, we're still five days away. And again, the models could change. It could change as we get closer. So just note that. All right, it looks like these uh, showers and even those thunderstorms should be pushing off towards the uh, east coast as we head into uh, next Friday. But I think it should be drying up by Friday afternoon here from Middle Tennessee. Uh, but if we look at the uh, temperatures down below that, it looks to be looks like our next cold front could be moving through by Friday of next week. That could drop temperatures into the uh, 50s to near 60s, which is not bad. But you may not like those temperatures, though, for next weekend because, you know, next weekend is a St. Patty's holiday uh, weekend. Because temperatures are going to start to feel somewhat like winter, but we're not expecting like a big drop of temperatures, though, so don't worry. But it's going to, it's going to be pretty chilly here as we look at the next run uh, right now. So this is Saturday of next weekend. This is a week from this is a week from today. So as you can see, the second system should be pushing towards the south and east of where we are. And again, the weather should be looking pretty dry. But look at the temperatures, though, for next Saturday. Yeah, this is what you're not wanting to hear. We're talking about temperatures starting to feel somewhat like winter. But not ex but not extremely cold, you know, like we've seen uh, earlier in the work week. We're, we're talking about temperatures trying to drop down from the spring-like temperatures down into the 40s, possibly for uh, the same the start of the St. Patty's weekend. Again, this is for Saturday, and the only warm spot here is Florida, where they're still still expected temperatures to be in the uh, 70s and even some lo even some low 80s for uh, that day. All right, and then as we head into the day on Sunday of next weekend, this is St. Patty's Day. Look at this here. Almost the entire country looks to be looking pretty rain, like rain freaks. So there'll be a few showers down towards Florida, but don't see a whole lot of big storm systems for St. Patrick's Day uh, next Sunday, including for us here in Middle Tennessee. It's looking pretty much rain free with plenty of sunshine, and uh, temperatures will start to uh, still going to stay pretty cooler for Middle Tennessee. We're still talking mostly 40s and maybe some low 50s possible for St. Patty's Day. So if you have big plans that day, just uh, take the jacket or maybe the sweaters because it'll be a little bit on the chillier side. And we're talking maybe slightly warmer weather here across much of the Arquitex region with uh, temperatures in the 50s and low 60s. And still, look at this here, Florida is the only spot here where we can see temperatures still staying pretty much spring-like in the uh, 70s and to near 80 degrees. But a little bit cooler, but won't be as hot for these folks down there uh, that day. All right, here's uh, Monday uh the 18th of March. So this is the upcoming next Monday. So it looks like the 18th looks to be still looking pretty dry for Middle Tennessee. There could be a few showers trying to uh, develop across portions of the Ohio Valley region, but for the most part, nothing too major to worry about for, for at least for much of the United States region as we head into uh, the 18th of March. And temperatures look to start to may start to warm up just a little bit back into the uh, 50s for Middle Tennessee, but uh, not really as warm yet. But temperatures may start to warm back into the 60s and maybe near 70 possible across portions of Oklahoma, Texas, Arkansas, Louisiana, and even some 70s here for Florida as well. So looks like we may see some spring-like temperatures trying to make a comeback maybe for next week. Or, yeah, well, yeah, well, yeah you know, for the next week, but not for this upcoming week. Or actually, we'll see spring-like temperatures in the upcoming week, but we're talking about like the, the other next week. You know, you know, the week, the week of the 17th through the uh, 23rd. That we could see, we could see, you know, some chilly temperatures and then spring like temperatures. So just uh, keep that in mind. All right, here's uh, Tuesday, the 19th. Uh, still looking rain free here across Middle Tennessee. It looks like the precipitation uh, <clears throat> uh, forecast for the next couple of weeks, may, or at least for the next uh, week or so, will stay pretty much below average. So I think it's going to be a good thing to get a little break from the rain here as we head into uh, the next week. Uh, but again, looking pretty dry here for Middle Tennessee with lots of sunshine. Of course, there'll be a few showers trying to uh, trying to develop across portions of the upper Midwest region, but nothing too major, like I said. And temperatures, 
This is next, or, well, yeah, this is next Tuesday, the 19th. We're talking about temperatures trying to warm back up into the 60s. So that's going to feel pretty not, uh, nice. So, so it looks like it'll be cool at least for the St. Patty's weekend into the first half of the next week. And then, and so we get to the 19th. If it's, if, the, if this just doesn't change, hopefully temperatures will start to warm back into, uh, back where we should be here for, you know, for the season. So we're talking 60s here for the day on, on Tuesday, the 19th, and also 70s here down towards Florida. It's a little cooler. But not not too bad. All right, as we head into uh, Wednesday, March the 20th, this is actually the first day of spring that day. It looks like this next system could be given a chance for maybe a few showers for parts, parts of Middle Tennessee. But I don't see any severe weather with that system, so just keep that in mind. But, of course, the forecast could change. But this is ahead of our next uh, front that could be moving through that could uh, drop down. That can really uh, drop temperatures just a little bit on on the 20th for the first day of spring down into the 50s and to the low 60s. So it'll feel like somewhat like spring if this is correct here. And temperatures will start to will still feel like 60s and 70s here across much of the southeast region, including Texas. So again, so I think we're just going to call a chance for maybe some showers, basically along the Tennessee to the Kentucky state line as we head into uh, the first day of spring. Again, that's for the day on Wednesday, March the 20th. All right, as we head into uh, Friday, March the 22nd, looks like the system should be moving off towards the East Coast. And that could, that could bring some mostly dry conditions from Middle Tennessee. But the, here comes this next system that could form across the Northwest Pacific, Pacific Coast region, giving the chance for some rain and snow showers. But not for us, though. But look across the, enti- the entire central United States, you're not ugh, talking too fast here, the central United States region, looking pretty much rain-free. You could, could see some heavy rain down towards Florida, maybe for the, uh, for the 22nd, if the forecast doesn't change much. But temperatures will start to be a little bit cooler, though, but not, again, not a big drop of temperatures as we head into the 22nd. We're talking about 50s uh, in the forecast. And look at this here, plenty of warm weather across much of Texas and Oklahoma, Kansas, into the eastern sections of Colorado and New Mexico with uh, temperatures in the 60s and 70s. And a little cooler for Florida as well because of the heavy rain that could possibly try to return as we head into that day. But, again, remember, this is just, uh, you know, you know, almost a week, almost a week away, and you know that could change as we get closer. That's why we call this a pure land of voodoo. All right, as we head into Saturday, March the twenty third, it look, looks like your Middle Tennessee's weather looks to, looks to be uh, pretty dry. So don't see any big storm systems to worry about uh, for the uh, as we head into the next week. But except for this uh, system that could potentially try to develop across the Pacific Northwest region, but uh, for the most part, almost the entire country looks to be looking uh, rain free. And temperatures will start to warm back into the uh, 60s, if this is correct, as we head into the 23rd. And look at this here, some 70s to near, to near 80, 80 degrees here across portions of Texas and New Mexico into uh, Kansas, Oklahoma, and Texas. So, so much of the southern plains, here, even across portions of the Midwest, you can see temperatures uh, feeling like spring as we head into the, uh, the day on Saturday, the 23rd. So we'll see what happens. All right, as we head into uh, Sunday, March the 24th, still, the weather looks, looks to still stay pretty much rain-free from Middle Tennessee, but here comes those showers that could try to potentially develop across portions of the Texas Panhandle region and across portions of Oklahoma, Kansas, and Colorado. And there's another system that could still try to develop across portions of the Pacific Northwest region, given the chance for rain and snow from Seattle, Washington, into Portland, Oregon. But for the most part, almost the entire United States region looks to be pretty much rain-free. And temp- look at this here. Look at the temperatures, though, for the day on the 24th. We're talking about temperatures really start to warm up into the uh, potentially into the 70s as we head into the day on Sunday, March the 24th. So maybe we'll see some warm temperatures uh, by then as we uh, get close to the end of the month. And also we're talking some 80s here, possibly across portions of uh, Georgia and Alabama and Florida as well. <clears throat> So here's the precipitation type ice. Again, just a few scattered showers, for, at least for now, across portions of uh, Texas and par- parts of Oklahoma, Kansas. And, of course, even with this other system, also produce a ch- that could produce a chance for showers as well. But I don't see any big severe weather systems to worry about here for the following week. So, we'll, but again, this is just pure land of voodoo, and uh, we'll, just see, we'll, we'll just see what happens. All right, as we head into... Uh, the day on Monday, March the 25th, this is actually the last uh, model forecast. So, again, this is the 25th of March. That's that's the last uh, Monday for that month. And it looks like we'll still see some mostly dry conditions to continue for the midday. But here comes those showers and storms that try to make, try to redevelop across portions of Oklahoma and Texas, and along with this other system 
over towards the northwest, the uh, northwest Pacific Coast region, give it the chance for some rain and maybe some snow showers and temperatures for highs down below that. Look at this here. We're talking 70s to continue for the day on Monday the 25th. So it's going to feel pretty nice and warm. So hopefully maybe temperatures will, will feel warm and spring-like maybe, maybe, maybe as we head into uh, the rest of the month. So we'll see what happens. And if we look at the instability values here with this next system up, up towards Texas, that could produce a chance for maybe a few strong thunderstorms. Uh, some could turn severe, but we'll see what happens. But again, this is just two weeks away, and that could change as we get closer. So just note that. And again, here's this other system that could produce the chance for some uh, rain and snow showers here across the northern Rockies. But again, this is, this is just pure land of voodoo, and things could change as we uh, get closer. So just uh, try to note that. Let's, let's get back to the radar right now and show if we see any more uh, severe thunderstorm or tornado warnings. And so far, uh, the warnings have now been expired for now. So we have are just pretty much just some strong thunderstorms across much of uh, the eastern half of Middle Tennessee and even down towards the south as well, and over down towards Giles County. And actually, now I'll just notice here we got some new, rep new, re new, new wind damage reports that have just came in uh, from Rutherford and Wilson County. So let's look at them right now and show you. Uh, also, I got, got a report here, just around 7 o'clock, about four miles south of Murfreesboro, uh, power lines down along Shelbyville Highway. This is from the uh, from the 911 call center. So, again, there, again, just want to give you an update here. There's been a report of power lines down and on, along Shelbyville Highway, again, in Murfreesboro, just about four miles south of town. And then over near the Las Casas area in Rutherford County, the, uh, the ham radio operator reported uh, of a large tree down on Browns Mill Road near the city. So, that's not good. And then another one here coming in from Wilson County and near Cannon County. There's been reported a tree down on the road on Highway 145. That's in Auburn Town. This is from another ham radio operator, and I don't, I don't think I, I'm. I kind of doubt it if this was if this was from maybe, maybe maybe a tornado. But I think for now this is mainly just straight line wind damage. So not maybe not a tornado, but just straight line wind damage. Maybe we'll say straight line wind damage for now. But you may never know that you know the reports could change change any like pretty much anytime soon. So just uh, keep that in mind. So again, the only county here that still has that uh, tornado watch here until 9 o'clock is for Wilson, Rutherford, Bedford, Marshall, Lincoln, and Giles counties. So, uh, but I get the, I, like I said, the watch could cancel, could get canceled a little bit early as the squall light moves out of, uh, we'll say, from Giles into, uh, uh, from Giles into Bedford into the Cumberland Plateau region. So, so it looks like the so it looks like the squall line should be weakening just a bit as it approaches the Cumberland Plateau region, which, which it is right now across portions of that area, like from Putnam County, but if you live in Cumberland County or Fentress County, I think the squall line should be moving into your direction here pretty soon, but I think that should weaken. But for the most part, I think the severe threat is done, and hopefully we'll, maybe you'll enjoy some more, maybe some nice weather for uh, tomorrow since the sun will be out again. So anyway, that's it for this uh, forecast video update, what we call it this uh, special edition. And again, I don't usually do videos on the weekends, but usually on some weekends, you know, if there's active weather, I'll have to go live on the air on Facebook, do a little coverage of severe weather, or of course do special editions. But you know, if there's severe weather on weekdays, you know, I still come, I'll still come on the air, you know, for severe weather uh, coverage, and of course, still have my normal schedule for forecast forecast video updates as well. So, uh, yeah. And by the way, you know, this is spring, you know, and this is severe weather season, and again, just you folks still don't need to be prepared for this uh, for the rest of the uh, season because more severe weather events could happen. Uh, uh, then, so uh, just uh, keep that in mind. But anyway, uh, I'll be back here first thing early Monday morning. Uh, at, as a, I don't know what normal schedule for the next uh, forecast video update beginning around, uh, we'll see about 8.30 or so. just depends if I get up uh, on time. Uh, but uh, <clears throat> in the meantime, I'll still continue to post no more notes or updates on my blog and Facebook pages uh, 24-7. So in the meantime, thank you for watching, and I hope you enjoy the rest of your weekend. And I'll see you guys first thing Monday morning. So uh, take care, and God bless.